It's your girl, VK Jehanum, and tonight we're going to talk once again about Jesus Christ. Now, I was raised Christian. The main church I went to was Asbury Church, and after becoming a Satanist, I took a Bible class at Calhoun Community College. Those are my sources for all this. You've already seen many black magicians who believe that Jesus was a real person say that Jesus Christ was probably a black magician like us and like many of you. I made a whole video explaining what I thought Jesus was and that I thought Jesus Christ was a black magician and a practitioner of demon magic. But we're going to talk about how he was viewed in the Bible. Obviously, he was portrayed as a incarnation of Jehovah when he was definitely an infernal practitioner. But the way he was depicted in the Bible is often misinterpreted by Christians. Before you even talk about the Bible, there's a variety of things you need to understand. One, the Bible is an anthology. It was written by a variety of authors in a variety of time periods. It contradicts itself because it's supposed to. Think about the uh, demonic gatekeeper compendiums released by Become a Living God. There are contradictions between authors in there. It's a series of authors giving their own interpretations of a, giving, of a given divinity, right? The next, you, next thing you need to understand is that a lot of the uh, historically relevant context is unknown to your average Bible reader. For example, there's a passage in the Old Testament saying that you should not take the Lord's name in vain. Most Bible readers think, think that that means you shouldn't say Jesus Christ or oh my God when you're angry or surprised or impressed. No, not how that works. Saying Jesus Christ when you're surprised isn't taking the Lord's name in vain. Taking the Lord's name in vain is when you're a pastor and you put the tithe money in your pocket. The name, or Hashem, as the Hebrews would say, is a metaphysical and philosophical concept. The third thing you need to understand and is that the Bible was meant to record truth, not facticity. It wasn't supposed to be factual. It was supposed to be true. A great example of this is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. In that story, a pair of angels pretending to be human men wander into a very homosexual city and they take refuge with a strange man named Lot. In the story, the uh, local population, male population, congregates around the door of Lot's home and they say, hey yo, we saw two really hot guys come into your home. We want to gang rape him. And then Lot says, hold on, don't gang rape these uh, two men. Gang rape my uh, young virgin daughters instead. And they were like, nah, nah. We want to gang rape your male guests. This story confuses a lot of Bible readers because it's really fucking weird 
for a father to want to see his own daughters raped instead of seeing two male strangers raped. The explanation that I was given in, uh, what was it fucking called? Westminster Christian Academy was that Lot thought it was important to be a good host, so he volunteered his daughters for gang rape, gang rape instead of the strangers. That's horseshit. The Bible isn't meant to be factual, it's meant to be true. One thing I learned from the biblical scholar, Reza Aslan, is that the Bible is meant to be true, not factual. Facts are sort of a com comparably new historical concept. You see, if you were writing about a person named Mike, and you wanted to say, Mike was really generous and compassionate, you wouldn't just write, Mike is really generous and compassionate. What you would write instead is, once upon a time, Mike found a homeless man in the rain with no shirt. And Mike spoketh unto the man and said, hey, let me take off my shirt and giveth it unto you so that you may have a shirt from the rain and then I will wander the rain with no shirt. They would make up stories to illustrate a point. That story about Lot wanting his daughters to get gang raped instead of the strangers is an illustration. You see, young virgin women were considered the pinnacle of sexual desirability in that time period. That story about Lot offering his daughters up for gang rape is meant to tell you that these Sodom and Gomorrah motherfuckers weren't just gay. They were super gay. That's important. No father, well, almost no father, would prefer to see his own daughters raped than a pair of male strangers who he's had one pleasant encounter with. Now you get it. Now you understand how to interpret the Bible and you understand why so many Bible verses are factually untrue. Now we can talk about Jesus. Jesus is commonly misinterpreted as a pacifist. No, that is not how that works. I'll finish that in part two.